Basically, we just need a three minute clip. Talking to himself again. He's noticed me. Oh no. We've arrived at Yamaha Guitar Group Line 6 HQ here in sunny Calabasas, California. This place is beautiful, by the way. I would like to move here. I miss home. We're about to head into uh, to Line 6 where they're going to show us some, some new stuff. It's going to be fun. And just lots of other stuff too. Not just new stuff. Don't ask if it's a Helix 2. Just a couple don't, things. Just don't ask. If there is, we can't what tell you. makes you think we can say anything? <laughs> and two, there's not, so there you go. It begs the question though, would you, per, would you rather have a 36 by 10 cabinet or like a 24 by 12? Which of those two is? Or a Helix. Yeah. <laughs> is this the in helix, the helix jokes will run strong today? Is this in the helix? <laughs> Nick and your your manual focus is killing me. I'm sorry. You go by is it Robert? Is it short for Robert? Uh just Bobby. Bobby? Bobbert. Bobbert. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. Why? This is what this is what worship tutorials need to look like. I believe these are all the amps that are in the ear. What? I would assume that that's what this is. Yeah. This is awesome. I've never seen this like black one. Hey, hey, hey. That's pretty cool. So this is the original original beam right. from like the the 1.0. You know, yeah. Um, so that's what the, this one was, and we actually we didn't have one for a really long time, so we had really? to go get one. Yeah, yeah. like I've, like on reverb or something. <laughs> that's how I got mine back. <laughs> Do you remember the year the 1.0 came out? Oh, 98. 98. Was when they, oh, was that when was they were announced. That was a good year. I don't know if that's the year they actually shipped. <laughs> that's why. That was when we we also said, hey, why don't we combine an FBV yeah. and a Pod XT? Oh, it's it taped down. <laughs> so th this guy was. This was a powerhouse yep. for a long <laughs> time. I use that. Yeah, that was, this that was this one was super popular. Thing, yeah. yeah, so this was a this was the X3 floor, which was the, just the yeah. floor version of that. Um, then came Pod HD. So the beam wasn't as strong as the 500. So, so, the, the, so this is the same tech. Uh, but well, I had one of these. Yeah. Th these guys were just workhorses for tons of players. Mm -hmm. We still yeah. oh. sell HD 500 presets on the website. It's still people. Tons of people yeah. still use it. What we have here are these are all the rack versions of pods. Since we're in the rack section, do you guys have a a copy of the? Um, the rack mounted drive unit that you make for the edge for YouTube. Let's go take a look. Because <laughs> um, this is the only one that exists technically, right? Let's go take a look. <laughs> so you're talking about the Stompbox models? Yeah, yeah. Um, so here's it all five the, of them. It was the yellow one, right? Right. So yeah. everybody forgets that we actually made five. Oh, yeah, oh. that's the red one. Yeah, so the green, obviously the DL4 oh, yeah. is, everyone is what everyone that. knows. Yeah. And then probably MM4 next. Yep, I yeah. think so. Um, but DM4 was distortion modelers, mm -hmm. and then FM4 was for filters. Always and, wanted one of those. Yeah, and this is the one that most people forget. Honestly, this is the only one I could find in the building, <laughs> and the faceplate's missing. Okay. What this was was Pod 2.0. Oh, wow. And a four button. That's cool. Yeah. This this is what started my love of tremolo. I had one of these. Those things could kill a person. They were oh, heavy as all get out. Yeah. <laughs> heavy shipping, when I shipped one, I was like, I'm sorry, how much did that cost? <laughs> Echo Park. I wanted the Echo Park so bad in Verbzilla because of the Octa or whatever. The Octa, yeah. yeah. Well, and the thing that it's a lot of people are still great. I don't think it, a lot of people really, um, at the time, got the the idea that this was a totally modular pedal. Oh, really? So, for example, you could get an Echo Park. You yeah. could go to the store and buy your Echo Park. But there's a little button here, and you push it with like an Allen wrench mm -hmm. or something. This will pop out. It's like a game cartridge, like from the old, like. Yeah. You know, home systems, yeah. and then you could pop in a tremolo what? pedal. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Huh? I didn't know that either. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so the modules were totally interchangeable. That's with, awesome. Yeah. So I thought it was a super clever design. And did all this happen before I worked here? Did so, you sell the modules separately then? Totally. Yeah, oh, so, interesting. So for example, like here's like 
Yeah. You want to take a shot? These are all the modules I could find. There's a few, I think there were 10 or 11 total, but yeah. that's what I could find that's so cool. when we were retrofitting the building. That was like yeah. the coolest thing. I was like, what are all these noises? So if you have a Line 6 HX product, you, uh, this is what's in it. This is pretty awesome. This is a wall of amps and pedals, and uh, you got AC15, AC30 farm, SX, the AC30 top boost. Which is one of your guys' favorite amps in here? Is it in the? Is it in here? We use the matchless DC30 the most. Is that in? That's in the studio. That's in the studio. That's in the studio. Okay. For good reason. This is the DC30 that lives in the Helix. It's my all-time favorite amp in the Helix. And I had no idea it was in this beautiful color scheme. That's a Chieftain over there. We'll see if it ever shows up. That would be awesome. But uh, probably apart from that, it's probably this this box right here, the gray panel. So these gotta be, we gotta find somebody who knows. I, I, we're told that it's either Ben or Eric would know. Like, what year is that? That's gotta be a, because the gray panel is like 63, 64. You know, what year is this box? That'd be awesome to know. Hopefully we'll find it's out. very cool. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> This is Sam. Hello. Sam is the sound designer at Line 6. And I asked him, what is a, gosh, do I have, do I still have my key? No. Okay, good. good. <laughs> you know, you got a big piece of cilantro. Oh yeah. We just had tacos and uh, our good Obviously friend. Obviously they were not, not very good. Our, <laughs> our good friend Jonathan Sullivan once said that you cannot get a bad taco in this part of the world. So, I, I so far agree. he's right. <laughs> so I asked Sam, what sound have you designed that I would know in the Helix? He's like, oh, you know the Elmsley? Yeah. So I asked so I asked him about like amps that you own in real life and he was like, Yeah, you know the new twenty two oh three model? That's mine. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's my personal amp. Nick and I Nick and I played what was that song we did to demo that? Uh Sugar, Sugar We're, we're going, going Down. down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was fun. Yeah, yeah that I watched was. the video, yeah, it sounded great. Oh thank you. Yeah, oh thanks. You guys were having way too much fun. Not allowed. <laughs> yeah, we can't do that. Yeah. So that's your actual amp. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. That's cool to know. It sounds good. I think Nick's found his next guitar. I'll back up to my side. Yeah, we might hit those. Yeah, this thing's awesome. Like, I hear the tone. I hear the tone. Sustain. It's just, it's just going. It just keeps oh, going. Beautiful. The resonance. But honestly, this feels really nice. This is Eric Klein. He is the chief product design architect. Yep. I love it. The architect. We'll have, we'll have more yeah, video yeah. content with him we're shooting later. You're actually the seventh video. <laughs> Something like that. So we were chatting about the origin of the name Line 6. Well, well, tell us the story. Well, that, that, interesting. that predates my time. Okay. But uh, in the, the Prezo we just showed that we can't show to the public. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. There was a, the AX212, so 1996. Yeah. That was the that was the first product that Line Six released. But before that, Line Six was fast forward designs. Fast forward. Fast design. forward designs, and they did a ton. They effectively designed and created a ton of products for other companies. Okay. So for Tascam, for Digidesign, oh, for a, a ton of Alesis products. Yeah. So uh, so it was it was uh, Marcus Ryle, his wife Susan Wolf, and Michelle Dwadik where they, they created fast forward designs and we still have a couple people here who were from oh, back, wow. back in the there day. Um, but they had a, a place in, I want to say Santa Monica, okay. and they were working on the, the AX2 amp and they were doing all these sound demos and occasionally somebody from Alesis would come in and go, hey guys, how is it, how is it coming with our project? And they're like, oh no, and they didn't want them to know what they were working yeah. on or maybe they didn't want them knowing that they weren't working on releases at that time. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, so the receptionist would get on the phone and go, hey Marcus, you have a call on line six. I love and it. their phone system <laughs> only had five lines. So that was code for everybody's like, cover up what you're working on, turn off all the stuff, hide it. Yeah. And then when they were trying to That's come up with a corporate story. name, they kept going back and forth and naming products and naming stuff is the worst part of my job. And they're like, what about line six? And it kind of stuck. And I cool. love that. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's I love that. It, it, it was birthed from an inside joke. There it is. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. I think this thing's gorgeous. I like the black. Those inlays. Yeah, that's cool too. That one's neat too. No, and it was not. It was more of a tricky shape. Okay, then it wasn't that. Uh, I, I like these these fret marker inlays are really yeah cool. that's like a little modern touch kind of Japanese woodworking inspired. I'm only gonna put a video of you tuning. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the best it. Part. Yeah. We're just volleying. Nope. So when I get an amp to model, I'll look at a schematic here, and I'll look for every place where the sound has a change. And like, like after that first gain stage, there might be a change. There's a capacitor and a resistor. That's an RC filter. That's going to roll off some low end. There's a voltage divider. You're going to lose some level. You know, you and you, you just kind of look. Once you've seen a few circuits, you can you can kind of tell what's going to happen as you go through. And so I'll make just the, the the overall routing here, where there's like a tube simulator. Each one of these these little rectangles, we call it a DSP block. This one is a tube simulator. This one is a like a frequency filter of some kind. This is a a gain or level adjustment. And so each one of these steps is the same kind of change that's happening in the amp analogous to what's actually here on the circuit. And then once we do that, I take the, the amplifier chassis out of the amp and I can hook test probes up to various spots. And I run oh, wow. a, a okay. series of test signals through the amp. These are all the controls, controls behind one uh, preamp triode. There's gain, there's what asymptote, which is really like threshold level for when it starts to distort. There's the knee, so how hard or soft it's distorting. There's some filtering, there's some sag amount. So each tube stage I can tweak how it's gonna sound. And then, you know, I go to the next part of the thing where there is, like I said, there's a, a filter. So there's a high pass shelving filter. It's cutting three and a half decibels at 5,000 Hertz. So, you know, we're just, we're replicating the results of what we've measured while working our way through the amp. In the Helix, I mean, normally we're running this test software in, in a piece of hardware, but mm -hmm. because we've already modeled this amp for the demo, I'm just loading up the model in here. So the Friedman model is running in the Helix. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, I have an effects loop. Mm -hmm. The effects loop send is going to the front of the amp, and then I have something called a buffer board clamped to the speaker jack. Now the speaker is actually live in the other room. Okay. Because you need the speaker cabinet connected in order for it to sound right, or else the power amp just won't sound correct unless right. it has a in some kind of accurate load. Uh, but I'm just clipped on electrically to the speaker output jack, and then it's coming through the return into here. Now with one switch, we can decide if you're hearing the amp model mm -hmm. or if you're hearing the electrical version of the amp, and then it's going into the same um, cabinet sim. Got it. So we're hearing the amp, full amp, power amp, and everything through the cabinet sim versus the model. Now, if all goes well, <laughs> this amp's been on all day. You're right. Um, huh. If all goes well, oh, <laughs> it's on standby. There you Cut! but couldn't tell you what you're on right now. So, but. me neither. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> wow. Right. So, yeah, feel free. That's wild. It sounds exactly the same. Yeah, and it feels very similar. Like, it feels the same, too. And one of the reasons we like to do this, like, small iterative things is because it models the actual kind of, like, electrical system of the amp. Yeah. You know, it's like, when you play loud, like, the, the, we have a sag detector late in the amp after that can tell the level and it tells all the power tubes to sag, so you get the kind of same dynamic response to yeah. the system. What is, I've seen that. That, like the white piece of paper on the gain knob or whatever. <laughs> I've seen those on a few of the amps. What is that? So that is just our little homemade thing so that we have replicatable knob positions. Because when we're measuring a knob, you know, we will go, want it here, we want it here, we want it here, we want it here. So every- I thought it was something like that. Yeah, yeah and so we do that for everyone. So if you look in our tool here, like for instance, you will see this, the, the drive knob, I'll open this up. 
these correspond to the nine positions huh. of that. So at full up, there's zero dB of gain reduction. At, at the next one down, there's negative 3.4. At the next one down, there's negative 9.2. At the next one down, there's negative 16.8. And that's because we've gone through and we actually swept and measured at all those yeah. positions. Mm -hmm. We're matching that knob. And as you can see, it's not an even thing. No. Because yeah. Yeah. The, the amps aren't. Yeah, pods, the potentiometers and, and amps are not perfect. They're actually one of the, the most variable pieces. We just visited line six yesterday, wrapped up. Smell that ocean? Yeah. You can hear the waves in the background. Here on the Santa Monica Pier. Follow me, Nick. There they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, line six Yamaha Guitar Group's headquartered in Calabasas, which is uh, that way. Just, uh, you know, a little ways outside of Los Angeles. It's an awesome time. We, ho we hung out with uh, Eric and Ben and some other people from the Line Master 6. masterminds behind the beautiful Helix. Yeah. So, uh, links below. Check out all of Line 6's stuff. Line 6, thank you for having us. Yes. We really enjoyed our time. Thank you. Hopefully Yamaha. more to come. Yes.